We're glad to know that you're still there. And uh, this is Off the Press, uh, a segment in The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. So uh, we're hoping that to look at the headlines and see what they are saying this morning. Uh, the national dailies we're going to be looking at are Punch newspaper, uh, Daily Trust, uh, or oh, sorry, The Guardian, um, this day and the Daily Independent newspaper. If we have time, we'll also look at other papers this morning. But we are glad to be joined this morning by Mr. Tunde Kola Wale, who is a legal uh, professional as well, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State that will be talking with us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kola Wale. Good morning, my brother. Okay. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you. Okay, um, let's begin with the, the biggest headline on Punch newspaper. A crisis rocks peace meeting. NLC strike threatens emo polls. Um, the riders are traditional rulers flee as parties bicker. Uh, labor plans airport power shut down. IG deploys new CPs. Three killed in Kogi as INEC rejects call to remove emo wreck. Okay, would like your comment on that first headline. What? Well, what's the answer to the ball? Yes. It's just a what it's just a mean? joint a joint headline because the headline starts with off season elections and then crisis rocks peace meeting NLC strike threatens emo polls so it's labor and then the 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 polls in emo state and other states as well. Mm. Can you try to open the studio to go to the house? The money is too much. With regard to labor, I have been following up um, what is happening in the South East, especially with the Buddha assault on uh, the NLC president. It's a dangerous president that we only saw during the military war. No one could have imagined that a kind of a thing would be happening under a civilian administration. We just tell you that the mindset for people we have running the country today is not too different from those of the military of the past. And as such, the labor movement the student movement and all the Nigerian people should get ready to receive that kind of effort uh, in the nearest future. In fact, I am shocked that the NLC didn't embark on strike right from the very minute the NLC president was assaulted. They are taken away under a, a blindfold and then severely injured. That is what ought to have been done. And not for the NLC and the other labor movement to start saying they are setting aside a day to embark on strike to protect the assault on their, on their leadership. I don't see any way in which what labor is planning is uh, going to affect the polls in those uh, places. Why do I say that those who carry that those brutal assaults ought to have known that there's going to be consequences or that there will be reaction? If they were concerned about uh, the poll that was coming up, they wouldn't have done what, uh, what they did. In fact, it is not impossible that they were not ready for the polls. That was why they did what they did. So it is not labor that is threatening the elections or the forthcoming midterm elections all over the country. Rather, it is the political class that wants to abort that election because of their name. They are the one going to abort the election because of their unconscionable action, their ruthless action. They win, win, or win elections at all costs, even when they don't merit it. I am of the opinion that um, the strike should go on abated. Everyone is not going to fall. And uh, the election has been conducted at a later date. 
and then uh, nothing on what uh, will happen. Uh, after all, uh, what is the, does the Nigeria election have any meaning? Hmm? What we have is a situation in which people pretend to have voted, and then the results, how will the election will later be determined by the court? Well, uh, the That's my take on that. Yeah, the NLC at least have been uh, gracious enough to say the strike will come up uh, after the election because the election is on Saturday and the strike is supposed to come up on Tuesday, uh, November 14. The election is on November 11, which is Saturday. So uh, maybe it's not going to affect the election. Uh, but w what worries something is um, a statement, I don't know if it is true, but it was credited to the governor of Imo State, Hope Zodima, saying that uh, Joe Ajayro, uh, having, he comes from uh, Imo State and that uh, he's just fighting a cause that he does not know anything about, that the people who are being owed are not the workers of Imo State, but rather federal workers who reside in Imo State. I was just wondering why the federal government will, will, will single out only Imo State workers are not paid for that many months, if that statement is true. But he said that the reason uh, Joe was assaulted was because he came into the state with ignorance and was talking about things that he didn't know about. So that's why he was assaulted. I don't know how true that statement is. But that mo what, what I know is that the claim has been from Imo State government that it is not the, uh, the workers of Imo State that, that are being owed, but rather the federal workers. I don't know what you see uh, in, in that statement. That the federal workers are owed, but not Imo State workers. How could the federal government just owe only Imo State workers for that many months? Honestly, the actual quality of uh, what you're asking is not too clear. I'm not getting your question. So Can I rephrase? Can yeah, you hear me better properly. now? Well, it's a little better now. Yes, maybe I should speak a little bit louder. That's why, that's what I'm saying. All right, I'm, that would be good. They say the Imo State government claims that the people who are being owed in Imo State are not necessarily Imo State workers, but the federal workers in Imo State. So my question is, is it possible for the federal government just to single out Imo State and and owe their workers and not every other state because it's the same complaint. It's not coming from all other states. Do you believe that statement if truly it's uh, coming from the governor of Imo State? Well, that would be very strange indeed. You know, uh, workers are paid the same day, either at the local government level, at the state level, or at the federal level. Why? The federal government will single out their workers and not pay them as a great deal. I'm not fully aware that the elections are coming in those places and they know the consequences of such a refusal to pay the workers. Uh, it will be very strange to me. But again, you want to ask if the government of Imo State is saying that, one would have expected the federal government to have refuted it, to have come out uh, with a statement to either confirm or affirm uh, what the remote state government has said. But don't, let us uh, not uh, totally uh, say that what the government is saying is true. Why do I say this? It's not impossible that maybe those who are representing the interest of the federal government like the accountant uh, for the federal government in Imo State, like maybe the auditor, like maybe those who compile the names of people are to be paid and all that. If they didn't submit the voucher as that went due, it is not impossible for such a thing to, to happen. If the voucher for the paid the paid due is not being compiled uh, in Abuja, but in the respective states, it is not impossible. Again, maybe when these things are submitted to Abuja, certain persons are supposed to vet it before the payments are made. And those who are supposed to vet it in Abuja didn't beat on time. It is not impossible for that kind of thing to happen. 
But the bottom line is uh, whether the mistake is coming from Imo State or coming from Abuja is no longer the issue. If workers decide to withdraw their, their services because their staffers have not been paid and all that, if they are sought on the NLC president and the other leaders, the appropriate steps to take, in my humble opinion, it is not. The governor could have invited the labor leaders and rank can file for a meeting and clarify the situation with them. Persuade them not to engage or embark on the strike. But without doing that, we decide to assault the leadership. And then the government even had the temerity to come out openly that the NLC leaders and the NLC uh, or the workers, the federal government workers in Nimbo State were engaged in politics totally outside the problem of uh, what they expected to do. And because of that, you have to to yourself the power to brutally beat assault and then nearly kill the NLC president and some of his other colleagues. For God's sake, that is not the adequate response or the expected response to the accusation that the Imo State government is making. So, I don't think we should dignify clarification with any explanation. What is bad is bad. The government of Imo State has done what is horrible, what is terrible, what is unconscionable. Must you know that never be tolerated in a decent society, especially from a leader who happens to be the governor of the whole state, who is, who is expected to be the father figure to everybody in there. If any of his own children are misbehaved, when not expected to misbehave, will they have called the police, will they have called the theater, will they have called the soldier to come and like, brutalize, to come and assault? blindfold and take his own children to a dungeon where they should be tortured. For God's sake, he wouldn't do that. So honestly speaking, his explanations or this explanation are neither here nor there. They should condemn what is bad. It's paid it's his paid. Okay. Well, let's move to another headline. Again, um, on the Punch newspaper, just like U.S. Uh, a few days ago uh, gave uh, advisory to their citizens, uh, Canada has also given a travel advisory to uh, citizens of Canada that they only should come to Nigeria when it is absolutely necessary. Nigerians lament as um, Canada suspends Abuja embassy operation. So apart from the fact that they are, they are talking to their people to only come to Nigeria when it is absolutely necessary, they have uh, stopped operations in Abuja. What is your take on the whole thing? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Um, Canada, Canada, Canada has told its citizens that unless it is absolutely necessary, they should not travel to Nigeria. And right now, the headline on the Punch newspaper says that Nigerians lament as Canada suspends Abuja embassy uh, operations, which means the embassy in Abuja has suspended operations. So what's your take? Yeah. Well, uh, it's not just uh, the Canada alone that has uh, done that. Uh, we recollect, I think, uh, this last week or there about, mm. the U.S. also issued an advisory advising their citizens that if it is not too important, if it is not too urgent, if it is not necessary, they should stay away from Nigeria for now. Of course, they also told their citizens to stay away from churches and mosques and some of these uh, public places. Big hotels. It is not impossible that their intelligence services have gotten information that certain things are going to happen in Nigeria and in some of these places that, that I've mentioned. That is why the U.S. is advising citizens to stay away from certain places and why Canada is also suspending uh, consular services 
in the Abuja, I mean, in the Abuja office, and what have you. When, rather than start lamenting uh, what Canada and the US have uh, done, I would say what Nigeria government should do is to liaise with them to find out why they are issuing such advice. And if they are told, then the government should go ahead and resolve the issues, resolve the security challenges, so that these countries that are advising their citizens to stay away from Nigeria, certain places in Nigeria, will uh, uh, lead the embargo. Security is not a thing that some of these countries joke with. It is probably only here in Nigeria that we see them that coming to citizens to the ordinary man on the street and we pretend that uh, we don't see it. We will not take action with regard to it because we think uh, we might be sending panic into the ordinary citizens because we think we might be taking hope away from the ordinary citizens. Look at the killings that are taking place in some of the northern states. And the last one we could hear about, certain people were said, were said to be celebrating it in Maluj, a Muslim festival in one of the northern states. And the bandits went in there, opened fire on them, killing as much as uh, 20 people. According to the report we read in some of the papers. So, if those things are happening in broad daylight and more than, why would uh, some of these countries who are in top of intelligence and information, who are like to their responsibilities to their citizens, not begin to take the kind of steps that they take? But these advice are not going to be forever. It's going to be some inconveniences for some short period of time. In that respect, I would advise Nigerian people, especially Nigerian citizens, who are open to travel to some of those places, especially to Canada, to reschedule their appointment. Security is not a thing that we should uh, compromise or talk with. Okay, um, we'll move to another newspaper. If we have time, we can revisit a bunch of newspapers. But the Guardian newspaper has a uh, a uh, headline here that is very interesting. 31 governors shun amendment financial autonomy, autonomy for state assemblies. 31 governors out of 36 governors, uh, 31 have shown amendment and financial autonomy to state assemblies. What's your take? Well, uh, I talked to President Muhammad Wali Find an executive order to that uh, effect. So, if there is an executive order, I mean, I should think that is already law, which the governors have no business to think out. They just have to obey that law. And then, with respect to amendment of the constitution, to accommodate uh, independent financial autonomy. And what have you for the legislator? I should think that the governor also don't have the power to tamper with that. Let's be sincere with ourselves. At the state level, the legislators, the assembly, are supposed to be the bosses of the I mean of the governor. Outside maybe the voters who vote for this governor. At the federal level, the National Assembly are, are also the bosses of Mr. President and the Vice President. Whatever they say is law, any governor, any president or vice president who toy with uh, whatever decision the National Assembly or the Vice Assembly tries to do, are playing ordinarily with fire. If our constitution we are being wrong the way to the wrong. But Nigeria is a unique place in which things don't work the way they should uh, work. How the system of government now become bosses. So, they say our assembly, 
So the National Assembly, people have the power to remove them and continue to beat my imagination. But these things are happening simply because most of the people you find in those houses of assembly are handpicked uh, by the government, the speakers, and the entire leadership of uh, most of the assembly are handpicked by the governor. And that is the reason the governors are able to do some of these things you have mentioned, or some of these things we see them doing in some of these places. Well, it is left to the legislature, whether at the federal level or at the state level, to liberate themselves from the shackles of the governor. They have the power, they have the wherewithal. They are the bosses of the governor or the system of government, whether at the state level or the federal level. So don't let us uh, begin to cry more than they believe. If the assembly members at both the federal and the uh, state level want to remain within the apron strength of the governor and of the president and vice president, good luck to them. Okay. Um, another headline is um, that uh, the federal government is to begin 40% reduction in uh, federal universities, in universities uh, generally. I'm sure it's federal universities, so I, I don't know what you feel about that. Federal government to begin uh, or begins 40% revenue deduction, rather, not reduction, deduction from Nigerian universities. Did you say deduction? Deduction, removal from Nigerian universities. Federal government uh, begins 40% revenue deductions from Nigerian universities. Well, that uh, is shocking to me in the sense that uh, the universities are already crying, that they don't have enough money and resources to run their respective institutions. And in fact, some of the salaries that are being withheld have not been paid. So why the university, I mean, why the federal government will not begin to detox money from the universities uh, this my imagination. But it is not impossible that the federal government has given some loans or ways and means to some of these universities in the past which they are not expecting them to pay for. Uh, except we get the details of the reason for this deduction. We might not be able to make a very informed uh, a commentary with regard to some of these things. But well, 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 be, that, be number, that as it may, even if they have given... Said that even if they have given uh, loans to universities, now that the universities are crying, like you said, couldn't there have just been a waiver, even if that is the case? Couldn't they have just waived it and said, okay, when there is more money, you will have? Well, the waiver may be difficult in the sense that, uh, and that is where uh, we should be sorry for our best. The government, at both the federal and state level and local government level, have been borrowing money from international organizations and then from the rest of the local banks in Nigeria to pay salaries and allowances. So if you are borrowing money to pay salaries and allowances and also to finance certain infrastructure development, then sooner than later, it will be realized that this money will have to be paid back to those people who lend you the money. So. If it is pay back time, the federal government will have no option. For example, you have one minute. Hello? Yes, please just wrap up. Uh, uh -huh. is up yes. so, so the federal government will have no option. For example, to start deducting some of the money they have loaned to those institutions with the view to pay back uh, the lender. 
Okay. Uh, well, Tunde uh, Kolaoli, uh, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's already uh, almost 8 o'clock, and uh, this is how we wrap it up on this segment of the show. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Okay, we'll be talking to Tunde Kolaoli, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State, and then we were looking at some of the headlines, but unfortunately those were... Uh, the much we could take this morning. We're going to just take a break now and when we return, we'll be taking our first hot topic, which will uh, eventually be on security. Stay with us.